So we talked a little bit about the idea of cognitive restructuring, reframing, challenging our thoughts. Uh, the Socratic questioning piece can really be helpful when you have a lot of time to devote to this. We can really sit and pick apart each little piece of that unhelpful thought. However, we don't always have time to do that, right? So that's something we'll save for the therapy session. We'll work with our therapist on that. And we'll get their support. But what can we do in between sessions? So a thought log is a great way to keep up with these skills of challenging our thoughts, being aware of what we're thinking and how it's affecting our emotions and our behaviors. So what is a thought log? A thought log is pretty simple. It's a sheet of paper with four columns. Typically, you can find these for free online. There's a few different versions, a few different variations, but today we're gonna talk about one that has four columns. So in the first column, we want to identify what is the event? What is that trigger? What's going on? Set the stage so that we can then think about how this impacted the next things down the road. So the event could be, hmm, my boss was angry at me. I want to set the stage for what's going on. Next, we want to identify what thought we had during this event. The next thing we want to do is identify what sort of emotions and behaviors we engaged in or felt during this situation. These emotions and behaviors are also called consequences. So we have events, thoughts, consequences, emotions and behaviors. And lastly, we have the category or the column of rational counter statements. What is that? All right, so we talked about how a lot of times anxiety is caused by thinking errors. Our thoughts are not very rational, they're not very helpful, they're distorted in some way. So by identifying these things, we can figure out how to reframe them into a more productive statement. So let's try this thought log. For the first category, I'm going to identify an event that happened. So I went out with my friends and I made a joke and only one out of the two laughed. All right, there's the stage. Next, I need to think about the thoughts. Again, weird, I'm thinking about my thoughts, not something that we do every day, but this is going to help us to explore where they're accurate, where they're not, and how we can change them. All right, so the thought that I have after only one friend laughs at my joke, I start thinking, oh man, I'm so awkward. Uh, I'm probably not even funny at all. That's the thought. Next, we wanna identify what's the consequence of this thought? So first I'm gonna think about the feelings. What are the feelings associated with this thought? So after I think about my friends not laughing, not thinking I'm so funny, I start feeling embarrassed. I start feeling worried that my friends don't like me. And then what's the behavior that comes after that? After that, I start thinking about this situation all day long. I can't even focus when I go back to work because I'm worried about what my, th my friends think of me. All right, so what can we do about it? Now we get to the good part. We need to create a rational counter statement. So when we're sitting here doing this thought log and it's not in real life, it's going to be a lot easier than when we're in the moment. So I just wanna point that out. It's gonna sound really easy right now, but it's gonna take a little more effort over time. So for the rational counter statement for this thought, I could say something like, you know what? Maybe it wasn't that funny, but Sarah laughed, so I think that's okay. Or something else even along the lines of, you know what? Maybe, maybe Beth didn't even care that I was telling a joke. Maybe she was busy on her phone. She's got a lot of things going on in her life right now. We just try to come up with any sort of statement that might be more helpful, 
might broaden our vision of what could be the situation. Again, seems pretty easy, right? But let's be honest, if we are super anxious, we're having all of these anxious thoughts going on, it's going to be really difficult to come up with a counter statement in that moment. And that's okay. When we first start this, you're probably going to struggle with it. It's why it's always good to start with a therapist so that they can support you with helping to identify some more rational thoughts. Again, it's much easier as an outside observer looking in than it is to observe ourselves. So typically when I work with clients in session, we'll go over the thought log. We'll practice it. We'll see what to do. Then I send it home with you and you need to do it on your own. And I remind clients that it's not going to be perfect. You're not going to get an A plus right away. That's fine. If the only thing you can do is the first three columns. That's great. That's an excellent start. That's where we want to be. First, we just want to be able to identify what was the trigger? What was the event that made me think and feel and behave it this way? Great. There we go. You know what? When you have anxiety, emotions are high. We're probably not thinking too rationally. We're not being able to problem solve. Just write those first three columns down and save the last column for later. After you've taken a few deep breaths, maybe after you've talked about the situation with someone else, come back and fill in that rational counter statement. You'll probably notice that after you've had some time to think on this, it's a lot easier to let that first thought go and focus on a more rational one. So because we know coming out with a rational counter statement can be difficult at times, I'm going to teach you a little trick to make it a bit easier. So we don't necessarily have to fully believe right off the bat that rational counter statement. We just have to make a possibility for it. So how do we do that? I'm going to use a trick called using bridge statements. So what are bridge statements? exactly what they sound like. Bridge statements fill the gap between the really unrational or irrational statement and the more rational statement. So bridge statements allow for a little bit of gray area by using words like might, perhaps, maybe, it's possible. We can start with statements that we might believe we might think are true. We don't have to believe them 100%, but there just has to be a little piece of it that we can entertain that could be true. So a couple of examples of bridge statements could be things like, it might be possible that people don't think I'm as awkward as I think I am. Another one could be, maybe I'm being too hard on myself. Maybe I'm judging myself more harshly than I should be. The last one could be, I might be funny to some people and not others. Can you see how these bridge statements would help us to feel a little bit better about some of the negative thoughts that we have? Can you see how they might help us to have improved emotions? We're not so hard on ourselves. We're not so wrapped up in the worry, the anxiety, the negativity we're able to see more options. We're able to see that maybe it's not so bad after all. So maybe, hopefully, by now, you're starting to think, I might be able to give this CBT thing a try. It's possible that I can change my thoughts and decrease my anxiety and live a happier, healthier life. I hope that's where you are right now, but if not, Keep giving this a try. When we come back in a moment, we're going to explore some different strategies for managing our anxiety. Some that aren't so cognitive, aren't so brainy. So sit back, relax, and we'll get to a little bit easier uh, strategies to manage our anxiety next. 